so looking forward for this episode <laughs> how are you <laughs> i was really looking forward for this episode we've been planning to do this episode for, for, for like a while like a years yeah after the it's pandemic. been like it's been, yeah since the pandemic there's always something going on <laughs> and how are you i'm good how are you i have a, a luxury of a guest today <laughs> uh, this is gonna be loaded with the star wars stuff you guys are gonna love it uh nail that i mean in in order for I'm, i think i need to take to take a step step by step in order to elaborate on, on your fandom because mm -hmm. you're like a you are the the true definition of a, an actual star wars fan yes from my perspective <laughs> how are you okay <laughs> how you been you drove like it was a bit of a drive right Together. yeah it was a little bit but it was worth it i got to like pass by like where i used to live so it was fun to do that Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, cool. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, okay, that will be me. I'm kind of new with like punching. So this is a challenge. Oh yeah. Because I'm I'm like punching and programming and looking at you, and then I'm fully aware that I'm on camera and I'm I'm used to being <laughs> on camera. So let's talk about your YouTube channel. So the first thing, like I said, we need to take a, a step by step into what you do. You do reviews. Uh, tell me a little bit about um, the, what's the name again? You appetite for collectibles. So originally, the channel was supposed to be where I was interviewing people who lived in South Florida, and like I wanted to get like the weirdos. So like you, me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like I had somebody who had the largest Godzilla collection. Our friend Jesse. Jesse Malero. Yes, he's, he's a beautiful collection. Yeah. Um, you know, I interviewed my friend Alex. He has the largest He-Man collection I've ever seen. It's oh, like, yeah, I remember. Yes. Yeah, 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 we connected. So I was primarily just focusing on those people because I was just very nervous to put myself on camera. Right. Um, and then eventually, you know, like a few people picked up on what I was doing and they were like, you know what, we're just going to, you know, have you do reviews and stuff. So I was like, okay. So I started unboxing like a whole bunch of Star Wars toys that I was doing. And then um, I joined the channel called MCE, was hanging out with Seth and George oh, Medina, yeah, and we were doing shows that together. We, that, that's no longer the case, right? Yeah, no, like everybody went and separated and kind of started doing their own stuff. Like George is doing stuff with Star Wars. Seth is mm -hmm. primarily like all wrestling, and I just stuck with Star Wars and other stuff. Right, right. I remember that. So, But the channel grew in, in, in general because you're no longer... I, I don't see just reviews anymore or just your collecting, which we're going to dive into the collecting <laughs> part uh, in a bit. But you're also like, for example, by the time that this episode comes out, this probably already happened. But you're like, Ayla Secura, like, really? Like, you're, I know. Tell me about it. So I've been messaging Amy now for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were always talking about like actually doing an in-person interview, like meeting each other at cons, but amazing, yeah. it just never, our schedule just never got together. So eventually I reached out to her and then she was like, Hey, why don't we just do like a double feature and have Michonne come on? She's like, she hasn't been doing nothing. She's been right. hiding. She took a hiatus. She took a so hiatus. For like so years, right? For years. And then me and, and for those not in the known, she was this infamous bomb hunter i know and the, and the, and the phantom menace and, and love it i love, love that it character. and i love her whole outfit right but um yeah like she put the three of us in a group chat on instagram and we literally talk like every amy. day amy broke yeah you. me amy and michelle we're all three of us are in a group chat together on instagram and we're always messaging each other So um, we were actually supposed to do the show tomorrow, but Amy has a thing with her son. So we moved it for next week. And, and how does it feel to go from like, all right, I'm just going to interview Jesse and my friend that does He-Man. And then and now you're actually talking to people that It's, were in the Star Wars universe. So like when I'm interviewing them, I keep it very professional. But like afterwards, when I log off, I'm just like, holy crap, <laughs> like <laughs> freaking out. But I don't know. It just makes me like I'm proud of like the little mini accomplishments I make. And like my boyfriend sometimes will look at me and he's like, you're a freaking nerd. You are a nerd. But he's you're like, like, you're cool, a nerd. A cool nerd. I try to be a cool nerd. So let's let's talk about that. So why? Why Star Wars? Let's get start with the obvious. Why Star Wars? Because I you even are 
tattoo, right? In Star Wars. Like, let's look at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah with, all you have tattoos. Tattoos all over the place. So tell me a little bit about the fandom. Where does this come from? So Star Wars came from my mom. Um, oh, nice. My first language was Spanish, and I didn't know how to speak English. So you started um, with La Guerra de las Galaxias. Yes. <laughs> and started watching Star Wars and fell in love with it, even though I didn't understand anything. And then when my grand, you know, when my grandmother died, I started learning how to speak English. Mm -hmm. And I just kept watching Star Wars and kept watching it and watching it. And, you know, I fell in love with Darth Vader and was like, oh my God, this is really cool. And then, you know, she tried to get me to watch Disney films, but I kept gravitating more to Star You're Wars. No princess. Give me the bad guy. Yeah. You're into bad guys. Into bad guys. Oh, sure. And then <laughs> eventually, like in middle school, I was still collecting some of it, but I wasn't really like deep into it until high school when The Phantom Menace came out. Really? And I was like full fledged, like, okay, went to go see it when it came out. I saw all the original, all the original uh, prequels when they first came out in theaters. And like I said, I was completely hooked. So you're. But I thought you were more like OG, but you're also heavily into. I know that the leave Clone Wars and Rebels on the side. Yeah. But I so you're more into prequels. That's more. Your I'm age in the age. middle because prequels is more my age group. But you know, I grew up with the original trilogy, and quite honest, it's still always going to be my number one love. I love all the vintage toys, and you know, I love Mark Hamill, especially meeting him afterwards for my birthday. But I'm still always going to be an OT girl, like. That's hands down. And then you get like, like, then you get an autograph tattoo not so long ago. Yeah. I remember seeing the story. So I got Rosario to sign my leg. And then previous, like, two mega cons ago, I got Ashley Eckstein to sign my leg now. So I have both of the Ahsokas on my legs, which is pretty cool. So I, I love, I love the fact that you have obviously this deep connection with Star Wars and, and it's very defined as well. But what, let's talk about collecting because you're also like a badass collector. Right? You have a <laughs> gigantic, you have a, a Toy incredible room. collection. Tell, tell me a little bit about it. Um, so that collection primarily started with Funko Pops. And then when I started noticing that it was just building and building more, I was like, ah, I, Gotta Your get out of this. Like Legos that yeah, just pile up and then dude. At one <laughs> at one point, I had like twenty five hundred Funko Pops, oh and it was just insane, and it was too much. Um, and then COVID hit, mm. and I was still working, but you know, I was bored. <laughs> I needed something to right. do with my life, so I was like buying a whole bunch of stuff online. I was buying like Black Series, and then Black Series kind of turned into Funko Pops. It was just too many of them. And then when I started hanging out with the guys from MCE, Seth had taught me about Hot Toys. And I was like, oh, wow, this yeah. is really cool. And yeah, I ended up buying my first one, which was, yeah, that was a big league. That was a big, which one was your first one? Uh, Darth Maul Darth from Maul. Uh, the solo you film. You are into bad guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. So, yeah, well, tell me a little bit about uh, your ahsoka focus or or because i noticed that oh, there's a pattern there right yeah just, that's her favorite character it's my ultimate favorite character so i remember when the clone wars first came out and they featured her and i was just like oh my god this is such a cute annoying character and the more oh, as a child yeah, yeah when right. she was the padawan for anakin right. skywalker no one liked her no one liked right. her everyone bashed on her yeah and then... because everybody everybody who bashed on her was old you know older fans and they're like how the hell does anakin skywalker have a padawan that we've never known about right um but you know as you dived more into the clone wars i just was hooked fell in love with the character and then when the last season showed up it just showed how much of a female badass there was don't get me wrong like i i have princess leia tattooed on me and it's a huge piece mm -hmm. but i just never connected more with a character because she was such an underdog and she always had to constantly keep fighting to prove who she truly was i, I agree with you and i, I feel like that's of, always of, been like right. that's always been the life that i've always had i've always been the underdog and i've had to prove myself part of part of the success of 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 her character is precisely that, that she was the underdog. She was the one that left the, the Jedi order, mm -hmm. the temple in, in technically nice terms. Cause she, she wasn't, you know, spoiled. yeah, she was pardoned, but she, she left. Was like, I'm out. Yeah. Suckers. <laughs> a, a rebel within the rebel. Mm -hmm. So I believe the character for Filoni, he said it himself, like it grew. Yeah. It became something else. And he, he wrote that character himself. So that was, 
you know, the, the fact that he wrote that and even George Lucas was like, wow, I really like that character. It was big for them to bring, you know, a female Jedi. Well, she was a Jedi in training, but to bring a female Padawan Jedi training to be that badass. Yeah, when I, when I, you know, when people criticize the, the what they call the new agenda, that mm -hmm. they need, you know, there's this invisible agenda that we need female uh, characters at the front and that destroys the, the fandom and whatever. I always say, wait, Ahsoka wants the proof that there's a way to do it. Everyone, ha uh, you know, happy about it. And then Rogue One. Yeah. Rogue One, I think it was breeding it perfectly executed. It has a female lead character at yeah. the front, and it's an it's a love letter to the OG. If you yes. like, from my perspective, I'll be honest with you, I cried heavily watching Rogue One. I it was funny before Rogue One ever came out. My ultimate three favorite movies of all time was Empire Strikes Back, A New Hope, and then I was Revenge of the Sith. But then when Rogue One came out, it like kicked in, and then it was. Empire Strikes Back, Rogue One, and then Revenge of the Sith. Because it was, a, like you said, it was a beautiful love letter. We got to actually see what happened when they destroyed the original Death Star. And it was beautiful. And that, and that path on, on that path from Rogue One to A New Hope. Yes. It's just beautiful. That yes. Seeing Vader that way. That For me, I remember crying in the movie yeah, theater. Yeah, I remember screaming in theaters with friends of mine. And we're like, yes! Because we've never seen a Vader like that being that sadistic and evil. And then, you know, like, I love the fact that CGI, that the way they did Leia and uh, Tarkin, it looked great. It wasn't, it blended, in it blended yeah. well. It didn't look like it was, you know, like that cheesy CGI. Right. Like, a cheap, well, not cheap, like early stages. Yeah, CGI, early stages which is, CGI. Which is hard. I, I, I love the fact, I wasn't expecting Vader. I, I didn't see any 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 teaser or mm -hmm. anything that, that kind of leaked that. So for me, it was a genuine surprise. I went with a group of friends that I, we actually went and saw um, The Force Awakens. Okay. And I, I, it's public that I don't like any of those films. For but me, I love The Force like, Awakens. Let's go and give, the, yeah. give this one a try. And I go, I don't want to see any, any of the new stuff. And then he took me to Rogue One. We ended up like hugging ourselves like, oh my God, <laughs> this is perfect. I love that. I love that film. Yeah. For me, Force Awakens, like I love to be... I, I didn't like I didn't say it's my ultimate favorite out of that trio, but for me, it was just exciting because I'm like, oh, my God, they're bringing back all the old characters. That's what I thought it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen, too. And then, you know, like you get the first introduction of Kylo Ren and you're like, oh, that's a badass character. But then, you know, stuff happens. Yeah, but I remember being in Celebration and seeing the trailer and when, and when Han and Chewie step in the, into the Falcon, like an old Han and then like, Chewie, we're home. I remember dying. Yeah. Like, that was my first death, like an ayahuasca dead. Like, I, I'm dead. I'm dead. This is it. But anyways, I don't want to bash on those films because then <laughs> that this is going to derail really easy. I know. Right? Like, I, what do you what do you think? Speaking of Filoni and, and leading characters, what do you think of The Bad Batch? I love that show. Oh, really? It's so good. I think the reason why I love it so much is because when season one first started, episode one, it literally transitioned straight into Clone Wars. They had the same guy who did the narrations in the mm -hmm. beginning, narrating the first mm -hmm. episodes, was narrating Bad Batch. And you, the first episode, you get to see what happens when Order 66 gets, you know, thrown out there. You know, you get to see Canon Jarrus as a young child mm -hmm. running and seeing his master getting killed right in front of him. And you get to see all the defective clones, the ones who weren't, you know didn't get to change or anything. And then, you know, you get to see what the Empire really, how evil they are. Right. I miss, I miss Kanan. Yeah. So much. <laughs> I cried so much during that episode. Yeah. I remember I saw it, I saw it twice because I saw it when my kid was too young. So he loved it. But then we saw it again when he was a little bit bigger. And then, and then for us, losing Kanan was, yeah. uh, spoilers, um, for losing Kanan was too much. It's that, the greatest love story ever oh, between oh, him and Hera. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then that leads to the new to the new series. So, how, what do you think of that? What the Ahsoka series? Yeah. Oh, I cried. I <laughs> was telling a whole bunch of friends like, don't message me, don't bash the show. Um, you know, like when I was doing shows with my friends, everybody's like, oh, give us a rating, and I was like, it's always gonna be a ten. I'm never gonna bash this show. I cried watching it um, when my friends went to Celebration. They FaceTimed me so I can see the trailer. 
I bawled my eyes out. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, I could not stop crying for like a month. And then when they released the infamous episode where her and Anakin reunite, I was crying so hard that, yeah, my, yeah I was yeah. crying so yeah. hard. My boyfriend yeah. came out into the living room and he's like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? And I was like, <laughs> like, I couldn't even talk. Does that compare? Because like they took the, that had a toll on me, but not as much as seeing Luke in the Mandalorian. Oh, I watched that at three in the morning, <laughs> like sitting in the bed like a child wrapped around in my little Star mm. Wars blanket, and I was filming my reaction, and you just hear me like, oh my, like oh, this bowling. crying. <laughs> And you hear the music and it, like as soon as I saw the ship land and I see R2, I'm like, oh, my God, that is Luke for me, Skywalker. For, yeah. That, in my case, I'm like, they can't. That cannot be Luke. Like I saw the I saw the X-Wing and I thought, you know, Ahsoka, uh, Ahsoka no, she wasn't there at that point. No, right? she wasn't right. there at that so time. That was my first my first guess. But then I saw R2. I'm like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. And then when I saw the saber, I'm like, they can't. They're yeah. not doing this. Is that Luke? I just started bowling because. For me, I know we're going to get, I don't want to get into the toxic side of things with Star Wars, but that's the look. Like, I grew up with the OG. Like, mm -hmm. I, I watched the OG when I was a kid. And I spent, what, 25 years waiting for, to see what happened, whatever happened to Luke, yeah. which was my hero at, at, when I was younger. So, the the prequel, the, the new films... Luke Skywalker is not the look that I was waiting for. No. So this, I, I think, I have a theory, actually, because the name of the episode is, what was the name of the episode? I got to, do you remember the name of the episode? No, uh, I think. Let oh me God. look it up real quick. I, I don't remember if it was like something stranger or, no, but no. the episode alone kind of like, it gave you a hint that something was going to happen. No, it, there's something. Let me, I, I'll make an incision. Here. And you, and you can tell, like when they're when you're watching that episode, when Moff Gideon sees the ship, how he's freaking out so bad, and it has to be because it was a, a you know a big time Jedi. It's it called couldn't the rescue. The rescue. Okay. So in my case, I'm like, they just rescue the franchise. They just rescue Luke. This is the look that we were waiting for, uh, not the the. The Force Awakens, yeah, the no. Last Jedi, whatever. Look, that's not the look that like, I refuse to take. That I know it's canon yeah. and whatever, but that that look from the Mandalorian, I was like, thank you for loving. That was hands down the greatest season, and I, I, for me to say this to Trump over Clone Wars, that was the greatest season finale I've ever seen in a show where it hit every by far. Age, oh, yeah. every generation. Oh, yeah. I had my friend Sean, who's 50 years old, was telling me that he was bawling his eyes out and he would never cry. But yeah, put Luke yeah, Skywalker in front of you. I'm like getting like, yeah. <laughs> was bawling his eyes out. Right. And still to this day, I, I rewatched that right. that scene and I start crying. It even it was, it's also one of the best kept secrets in, in Hollywood. Yes. Nobody knew. Because Mark, Mark that, Hamill kept telling people, he's like, I'm never returning to Star Wars. Not only that, like Kate from the Bo Katan, mm -hmm. like she thought in the, on the script, it, it, uh, apparently it said that he was Ki Arimundi or something yeah. like that. And then when she saw it on the air, she texted Filoni and she's like, "Really, Ki Arimundi?" Yeah, <laughs> like, like, they didn't tell no. Kid? They didn't tell nobody. I think it was only like four people knew. Right. They were trying to keep that they so had top to. secret. It had to be like that. Yeah. Well, let's keep going into okay. So collector, so collector, YouTuber content creator let's call it like that but also uh, you like you've been hunting down cast members and everything yes. and taking pictures tell me a little this, bit about it so this was literally six months after covid and oh, that's why it has the screen that's why it has the screen yeah. so i had to meet him again because i was so upset that i'm taking a picture with anakin skywalker like hidden, like yeah but the cool thing is like when you enter that little box you got to shake his hand first oh really yeah and i just looked at him and i was like dude you have an age and then i looked at his hat and i was like oh my god you're wearing the promo for kenobi right. and he started laughing right and so we took the photo but yeah i've been slowly hunting celebs i know it was i was like well mark hamill this yeah out. but this was this was all my mother really yeah 
for how do you even get get because I know those they sold out. It sold out in seconds. In seconds. Yeah. So I remember hearing about this and I was like, no way. There's no way. Because in the beginning there was a company called SWAU. Mm-hmm. They do all the contracted Star Wars autographs. Right. And they announced that he was doing an autograph. Mm-hmm. And normally SWAU only does that if a con is coming. Right. So I literally pulled up my big ass con calendar that I have mm. at my house and I'm looking at which cons are going. And I was like, he's coming to San Francisco. He lives like two hours away. I was like, oh, right. he's coming. <laughs> and I remember telling friends of mine on Instagram, I was like, mark my words, Mark Hamill's coming to San Francisco. As soon as they announce it, I was like, oh my God, he's going to be so expensive. It's Thanksgiving it birthday, weekend. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And it was my birthday weekend. And I remember my mom was like, we were having a conversation about it. My mom's like, you should go. I'm like, are you crazy? I can't leave you guys on Thanksgiving. I'm like, it's also my birthday. I'll to San Francisco to meet Mark Hamill. My mom's like, when are you ever going to meet him again? And I was like, oh, you're right. So the day that they announced the tickets, my mom texts me two hours before the sale. And she sends me a picture of her card. And I was like, what is this? And she goes, go buy it. She's like, happy birthday. Wow. And I was like, what should oh, I she buy? Paid for it. She like, paid for it. the whole Amazing. entire thing. My mom paid. My mom and, and my boyfriend both paid for my flight. They paid for my hotel stay and they paid for my Mark Hamill That's thing. Amazing. And they told me they were like, we don't. I was like, how come you guys are not coming with me? And they're like, we want you to experience that by yourself. I have a funny story with him. Uh, yeah. I met him. In the 90s, let's let's keep it like that. I was in New York, <laughs> and uh, I think it was Planet. What's the comic book? Planet. Uh, not Planet Hall. No. No, um, no, no, no. There's a comic. There's a there's a giant comic book shop there that has to do with planets. I yes. can't remember the name. From I the know what you're talking about. I was just walking, and I see, ooh, a comic book. I found myself in the area. Let's just walk in. He did a comic book that I totally forgot also the title of it. Something that he created and he was like promoting it. Mm-hmm. So he was signing the actual comic book. And I go, oh, there's a sign. There's someone signing stuff. I thought it was a comic book artist or whatever. And I go, that's freaking Har- Mark Hamill. I like, just went on a. And so I remember one of the guys saying, there's another Star Wars fan here. Just get on the line. <laughs> because like people were just like, like, Mark yeah, Hamill, Mark Hamill. Like that was way before all the movies, the new movies and all that stuff that the like he went into, you know, the the non-image uh, persona that was just the voice of the Joker. And yeah. Like, so seeing Mark Hamill out of nowhere was for me it was crazy. I spent like thirty minutes. Super cool guy. Oh yeah, he. So I'm in line getting ready to do the photo op and I text my boyfriend and I'm like I'm about to poop myself and he's like <laughs> do it after the photo. Yes, he's please. like don't do it now. Yeah, the- so I said to him, I go, hey, I got to put my phone away. I will call you. And he's like, oh, if I don't answer, he's like, leave me a voicemail. I want to hear your reaction. Right. He's like, it'll be the first reaction. He's like, you'll never get that back. So Mark sees my shirt and he's like, oh, you're the girl who's tagged me on Instagram. Oh, look at your shirt. There you and go. I go, yeah. And he goes, is it really your birthday? And I said, yeah. And I pulled out my driver's license and showed it to him. He gave me a hug and I literally started crying. Wow. And he's like, happy birthday. He started calling for his daughter, Chelsea. He was like, take a picture of her shirt. So I took a picture with them. And then he was like, all right. He was like, stop crying. He's like, let's take this really good photo. Wow. He's like, you'll never forget this. And he like literally put Amazing. his arm around me and I Amazing. I know lost he's very it. devoted to fans. Yeah. So. That once again, what happened to him in the in the prequels was was terrible. It was terrible, and it was awesome because even after this event, like I went to yeah, his panel. Oh, hilarious. dude, you should see it in the the my other eye. I'm holding back that tear, <laughs> and like as soon as we as soon as like the picture ended, I looked at him and I said to him, I go, this was the greatest nice. photo I've ever yeah, taken, yeah. and like even when I think about it, I get super emotional because it was. I call my mom and I was like, "You are the greatest human being I've ever <laughs> like ever acquired." Yeah, that's a gift, an unforgivable gift. Yeah, and here we are crying because of Mark. Hamill. That's hilarious. That's the <laughs> I always of cry when I think of this like <laughs> story because it'll never like I've had great birthdays, but this will never be topped off. That. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But I have. I noticed that you know it, it's not. <laughs> and just I was crying in that one too. <laughs> You're crying a lot, right? 
Drosaria. So, so, you met like all the versions of Asuka? The, 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 yeah. So, Ashley several times, so right? I've met Ashley several times. I've met Rosario now twice. And then I've met Lauren Mary Kim, mm -hmm. who's the actual, you know, who does all the fights and stunts for, time, right. yeah, for Ahsoka. So I got to meet her in San Francisco, and that was pretty cool. That, check mark one that I missed. Like, yeah, you know, you have all and I try to get them all to sign like different variations of Ahsoka. So like Lauren, I had her sign a plaque of the fight scene between her and Maul in oh, Clone yeah, Wars the in the Siege of Mandalore. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Speaking of Mandalore, um, um so we're in Temur Temuera. Oh my um, God, I love him. He was a riot yeah. when he was signing um, my plaques and my Funko Pops. He was FaceTiming with his son and he asked me to hold his phone while he signs my stuff and starts talking to his son. Then he says to his son, he's like, oh, I got to get off the phone with you. He's like, this beautiful girl has been waiting mm -hmm. to talk to me. <laughs> and he was like, say bye to my son. I turned the phone. I'm like, bye, son. <laughs> and we hang up. And then he gave me like 10 minutes of his time because he felt bad. And I was like, no, dude, you're good. You're good. I'm yeah, like, just you're talking. Boba to you. Fett. You're Boba Fett. You're good. <laughs> and Django. Yeah. I was and like, I'm not even club. mad. <laughs> and he even asked me, he's like, which, he goes, which variation of me do you like? I was really? like, I love you as Boba Fett. He's like, what did you think about which the show? One? Which Boba Fett? I, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was like, um, what did you think about the show? And I was like, can I be honest with you? And he goes, yeah. And I said, man, dude, they made you look terrible. Yeah. And he's like, well, he goes, good old boy Filoni. He's like, he took a better job. He's like, so hopefully they can rewrite my story. Yeah, I think that the problem with that show is it was it was influenced by the success of, of the Mandalorian Grogu, and Grogu specifically, and so. Knowing that from working not with Disney, but we're working on on the industry, you know, when when you have a very successful um, in, in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. then the next one gets compromised because everyone wants to dip in and say have a saying on it, and you have all this committee of people that comes from the CEO down that you cannot say no to, yeah, and then it becomes a a, a camel. Like, I think also what destroyed it was that they didn't really like stick to his character arc story. Um, they kind of it was made sterile. him very soft. It was just terrible. Like, I, and I then mean, the never, fact that you have to bring the Mandalorian to kind of save the day. No, but that was planned. That 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 was yeah. planned. That was remember that they shot the whole thing, edited the whole thing, and then scheduled it. It yeah. wasn't like they were making them as as they go. That was planned from the get go. But I think there was a lot of. It, intervention from from multiple people and that creates a salad mm -hmm. like those bikers like the whole thing turns into i i love robert rodriguez as one of my ultimate favorite directors but he should ever, have not directed a star wars show yet what he did for the mandalorian with the when he came back yeah when boba fett came back like the berserker version of, of boba fett just just breaking people's faces and, yeah and stuff like go like oh my god that's the boba fett like with my kid I remember seeing the OGs with him and, and then getting excited about Boba Fett is coming in mm -hmm. every single scene. And then when he got older, he's like, Dad, can I ask you a question? Just don't get, don't take it personal. I go, what's up? He's like, why do you like this character so much? And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, well, he barely talks. <laughs> and when he actually gets into action, he gets thrown into the Sarlacc. So what's out there for you? I, I, my conclusion was the action figure. Yeah. The action figure was so cool that but in my head. Just alone, the armor was just so cool. Right. You have the mythosaur. Right. You know, you're all, you look like a, like a space bounty hunter. It's a cool. It's a cool nice outfit. Thing. You got the jet pack. Like I gravitated to that but character he too. He has a point. Yeah. Yeah. And inherited. So <laughs> with this series, I was expecting to see that. Yeah. That gap. I wanted that. to see a ruthless bounty hunter. And then it just became power rangers and him walking with a towel and it was the just, power it rangers was, with the spin right it was it was crazy but tell me <laughs> about um you and mcgregor hello there. oh my gosh <laughs> he was magnificent you're also crying here no i was i was like very <laughs> bashful because i've had a huge crush on him even way before really? as kenobi so and i actually have like a really cool uh Obi-Wan Kenobi tattoo right. from, I think it was episode three. Mm -hmm. And when I walked up to him and he was like, oh, hi. And I was like, hello there. And hello I showed him my arm and he was like, oh, he's like, that's my face. And I was like, yes, that's your face. He's, he's, people don't 
well, some people do, obviously, no. But he's like the ultimate Star Wars fan. Yes. Ever. Ever. Like, ever. There's, there's this really lovely story between him and Ray Park. They were at the premiere of, um, of Rogue One, no, of Solo. Mm-hmm. And, of course, no one knew that, that Darth Maul was going to have that cameo at the end. And they were sitting right next to each other. And when that scene came up, the, so this is Ray Park saying, I couldn't, like, enjoy the scene because even McGregor was just hitting me like, my God, you're here. Look, it's you. Yeah. It's, it's like, let me look at it. Oh, I did. Fr- <laughs> I freaked out when I saw that in yeah. Solo. What do you think of Solo? I thought it was great. I love it too. I loved it. And I love it too. And it sucks because, you know, I tell people all the time that I think that movie came out at such a bad time. Right. One, it didn't come out during the holidays, which normal Star Wars films and the Avengers. The we Avengers. were They were writing the coattails of the Avengers. Right. Disney, my friend was a manager at the Disney store. The whole Disney store was filled with Avengers merch. Yeah, I mean, Avengers, and if, and, that face of the Avengers is Yes, one of the and if you're a kid. Right. Do you want to go see Han Solo's story or do you want to go see the Avengers kick ass and take names? No, I want to go see the Avengers. Not only that, but like finalizing the arc that they were building. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just any like a regular Avenger movie. But at the same time, the problem with Solo is that Solo swapped hands too many times before he got to Ron Howard. And the people involved in Solo before Ron Howard, they were just trying to do their own thing, their yeah. own version. And that's where things get a little like eerie. And Ron Howard wanted to stick to the actual Ron character Howard, story. Which is, uh, the director, he he did the right thing. The same thing that John Knowles did with Rogue One. Mm-hmm. He went and, and called the master. Like Filoni goes and called the master. Like even though the people, they're not supposed to, but they go like, hey, George. You know, he went and called the master and then George gave him him his his take on it. And then he added that sauce. There's this famous anecdote of of him um, talking during the scene. He went to the set and you you remember the scene where there he and Kira, they're uh, in in like the closet with all the cakes. Yes. And she's like trying that stuff. And then he comes in and then he tried to make some move on her and everything. So in the way that they had it blocked was that Han was supposed to take the cape and then hang it neatly in the closet and then punch the line. And then George was like, Ron, come here. That's not Han Solo. He would just throw that shit on the floor. Mm-hmm. That, that's not him. So those little those little details, it, it's what really builds the that season that that is very much needed for a Star Wars recipe. And I also feel like if you're a director and you actually want to make something great based off of one of the greatest stories ever told, you're going to want to try to contact the master and get their input because you don't want to destroy something that somebody built and turned it into this incredible world that, you know, agree, agree. Thousands and of gener- uh, hundreds of generations love Agreed. And not only that, the, the pressure, I cannot b- begin to wonder, like, uh, the projects that I do are not nowhere compared to that magnitude yeah. of a project. But we do get that type of pressure from, like, calls from the CEO or whatever. I remember JJ saying famously that Bob Iger said, um, don't think that you're doing a $250 million film. I paid $4 billion for the franchise, so I need it back. Yeah, it's like no pressure, but like you know, I, I make a good need movie. Stuff. But JJ didn't allow George to to have a saying on it, mm-hmm. so that's why it went sour. I think. Yeah, I think among other things. So, <laughs> but anywho, besides um, everything that we talked so far, you also cosplay. Look at that! Not just cosplay, <laughs> but like you go Dude, out that, and about. Right? That took hours. I'm, my friend Jamie, my friend Jamie, hand painted this. On my face. I was sitting in her chair for about four and a half you look hours. Amazing. It was great. And uh, tell me about the sabers. I forgot to find pictures of the sabers. I was just so... talking to you online to get pictures of, <laughs> you know, to, to build a show. So those sabers were just like practice sabers that I own for like, because I've been slowly learning how to spin. Because if you're going to be look a Star you. Wars fan, like you need to learn how to wield a saber. So I've been like slowly learning at home. I've right hit on. myself in the face numerous <laughs> of times. But (laughs) yeah, just recently I had purchased, um, Ahsoka actual sabers. Uh So I have those like on my dresser at home. Yeah. I'm not even touching those. They don't, they don't even get used. (laughs) They're just sitting there to look pretty. Have you hit anyone with those sabers? Like, like an ex or whatever? No. (laughs) (laughs) 
So, but then Leia with the lightsaber, that was interesting. Yes, because she did have a blue lightsaber in one of the older films, but... Eh. Oh, that's in a sketch. Right? Yeah. Right, we're in sketch form. Oh, whatever, everything is fair game at this point. Um, and of course, Ray. Your yeah. version of Ray. And you have multiple... Um, um, look at that. I love the fact that I noticed when I when I did it on the program, I was like, ooh, the Death Star. Like, that's a cool... That's a cool idea. Yeah. So my buddy who has um, slowly started doing like a photo production company and wants to do like cosplayers, he was like, dude, he's like, if we're going to do that bucket head, he was like, we're putting the Death Star in the background. I was like, okay, and I'm game. scarif because it looks like, like a, yeah. the, the beach. Uh, and that was, liter- that was literally off of uh, the Sawgrass off of Atlantic Avenue where like the water overseas right. right there it was there right, we the did swamp, it so yeah we did it at like alligators and... we did it at like seven in the morning had like these bike riders staring at me because i'm walking around in like boots fishnets and i'm wearing a stormtrooper bucket head <laughs> <laughs> so what's a wireless scene i love that that leads to what's what's the craziest thing that you've done so far for your fandom um i recently i've been doing like more like sith lord so like i just dropped the um a Kylo Ren one and that one took a while but right now I think the biggest one that I'm going to be having soon and it's almost done and I actually like paid a lot for this one to be done I'm going to be doing Cara Dune so really? yeah and wow. I've been like very making sure that everything is very accurate to the character how come you're not you're not with the Faro first because they're like two off of main character no that? i would love to but like they're very picky i know they're and hardcore. yeah it's not even they're... picky it's that they want to stick very true to what the uniforms look like and i've had so many of my friends ask me i've had i have a lot of friends who are in the 501st and they're always like dude you should join and i'm like i know but i know if i do this I'm diving into another world <laughs> it's a black and hole. I will probably sell my whole toy collection <laughs> and start buying a whole bunch of real like prop like right. costumes. Right, right, right. It, but it, so going back to Cara Dune, have you met Gina Carano? Yes, or? I oh, met her did? at Megacon. Oh, really? Oh, tell me about it. She then. was beautiful and sweet. And I was like, when I said goodbye to her, I like whispered in her ear. I was like, Disney screwed you. <laughs> <laughs> Disney, she said that, not me. Yeah. Right? But... The one troll was with you on it. I, yeah. I'm in good terms with the mouse. But I was, you know, I was happy to see her. Because I loved Gina Carano way before me, Disney. Me I too, loved too. watching her fight. She's just a badass. Mm-hmm. And I used to watch a lot of, like, MMA and UFC. Like, I wanted to do that back in the days. But I was like, yeah, I don't really? want to get my you face... wanted it to be... I wanted to do UFC, but I didn't no want to... shit. Yeah. Tell me about it. I I don't know. Like, I used to love watching UFC, like, in my early, what was it, like, 20s when I worked at the Hard Rock. So we would host it all the time. And we used to have a whole bunch of UFC fighters. And, like, one of my really good friends, who's actually a wrestler right now, used to tell me all the time, like, dude, you should go. He's like, they have the camps in Davie. You should try it. Um, What is it? I met Amanda. Miami is, like, a huge Yeah, huge. Um, One of my good friends is a friends with the trainer for Amanda Nunez so mm-hmm. I wanted to do that as well so but I just didn't want to get hit in the face <laughs> I'm on other places like, I know. you get beat up you get beat doing... up but I was like okay with getting hit somewhere else but just not in the face how about collectibles what's your favorite out of everything you have a crazy collection I couldn't find an actual tour you have to do that by the way I know I have to yeah, I, I know everybody's I asked me to like, do Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Have, you have to I've do. never done a tour ever. You have to. I you, know. You know this, that. But out of all your collectibles, what's your like your grail? Oh man. So <laughs> if it wasn't something that my mom gave to me, my ultimate grail will be I have all the original Ewoks graded. Oh, yeah. With all I their saw, accessories. I saw that. Yeah. I saw yeah. That in the, in, I had a You were like showing that there. Yeah. You have them all graded, right? I have all, them all single, graded. I, I think that we I even Didn't have you one. You asked me one of the shows, like, you have any Ewoks? I'm trying to put them together. I yeah. That. I even got um, the Ewok that's still the in the Kenner baggie. In the baggies. Yeah. yeah. So I've been building like slowly a whole Ewok collection. So I have like the original Ewok phone. I have the VHS tape. I have the original Ewok. Um, oh, what is gotta, it called? The comic. I got to show you the little village that I have there. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've been slow. I don't know. I just love the little furry cannibals. They're hilarious. I know. They were like people say, "Oh, how cute the the Ewoks," and they were like, "You." fully aware they were going to eat they were eating people like they were evil right they were wicked (laughs) and and, you know the story is telling true but that was a big thing back in the day like people storm out of the 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 movie theater saying little little bears like they were so upset about that i was a kid obviously a little kid and i absolutely loved them i had no issues with that because i think it's just funny little bears like you see them and you want to hug them but you're like oh my god they're gonna eat me (laughs) And there's a scene, I I think there's, uh, when we actually analyze that scene in film school, I pitch it, I think there's magic on that scene. And when when Tripio is like telling them the story and Mm -hmm. he's using sound effects and they're like scared and they're showing all reactions and there's there's a documentary, an old documentary called Creatures of the Return of the Jedi, something like that, that they show. I've heard about it. They have like a little scene where they're like rehearsing for that. That scene is wonderful of of tribute speaking in their language, which you don't understand, but based on the sound effects, you kind of picked on, oh, he's talking about hot. He's talking about the ad-ads. He like, I I love the Ewoks too. Yeah. (laughs) And I actually recently had watched the old cartoon show that they had on Disney Plus because I thought it was cute little cartoons. Right, right, right. The animated one. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> okay. So where where do you see this heading to? Like obviously you started you starting like let me give it a try it out. I'm a fan. I have a few things in there, but now it just took over your life like typical Star Wars. Thing. Yeah. Where do you see this heading to? Towards the Oof. in the future. I don't know. In a perfect world, you know, I would love to have, you know, podcasts like this or you know, like big. You're, bu- you're more than welcome to come here every time. I oh. know that you live far and it's quite a yeah. big drive, but you know that this is your house. Right? Oh, I know. But you know, I would love to have like one of those successful podcasts where you're just, you know, BSing and you know, kicking the shit with Star Wars, you know, actors and just like talking to each other as if you know it's a regular, you know, day to day conversation. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I love and you know it I it had me crying one time was that I made like a funny TikTok and like even the Star Wars page commented on it and I freaked out. Really? Yeah, because I was like, holy crap, I've never like been noticed or anything. Um but yeah that's just the goal. Like I will you know I would I feel because I'm a little older now, but I think if it was a little bit younger Nilda, I would love to have maybe worked on a set. Like, okay, what about fan films? Like, there's, yeah, there's a lot, there's of, a lot of fan films. On. I've been telling, you know, one of my really good friends that he's been wanting to make a movie, and I keep telling him, like, dude, you need to make a fan film. Like, do something Star Wars. I, I would help. There's this guy. I saw it. I saw it on Facebook not so long ago. There, there's this guy trying to make a, I think there's, like, high school kids or, or maybe a little older. They're, they're, I saw the trailer, and it looks, like, super well done. They're in Brooksville, like, down in the boonies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they're they're making something interesting i was like ah, too bad it's like freaking four hours away because i they were like casting for jedis and i'm like <laughs> i cannot be a jedi but i can be a bad guy like i, I would love to guy. fun films yeah let's do something yeah there's there's a few content creators that i follow on instagram and like one of them he didn't he disappeared for months on instagram and then come to find out he was somebody that was on kenobi Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was like something like that, like something small like that and just be like on a small role and just be in one of the films. Like I would freak out. That would be the greatest thing to ever happen. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, thank you so much. We'll look like even we're doing like late hours. The store is closed and everything. (laughs) But thank you so much for coming. I know it was what a bit of a drive. You're more than welcome to come every time. I would love it. I love to talk (laughs) Star Wars, obviously. Yeah. uh, Having you here is uh, is, uh, the ultimate you know, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. There's so much more to say. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> I really hope you like this episode. And don't forget, we did a bunch of episodes in the past. So just go and search the channel and check them out as well. Because there's a lot of, a lot of plastic chats and a lot of toy talk. And I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it.